Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maya Royo and I teach creative people how to sell their art online. And today's video is going to be all about how to market yourself using Pinterest. And I know that the title is, and, and, and mostly my channel, is a lot more focused on Redbubble and some about Etsy, but these Pinterest tips and advice are for people who sell on Redbubble, Etsy, Society6, Zazzle, Fine Art America, T-Chip, T-Public, Teespring, or is it Spring now? I don't know what they've done with their name and any other kind of platform, even people who do print on demand manually and even for people who don't do print on demand at all. I mean, this is just sitting down and breaking down what Pinterest is and how you can use it. But before we get started, I want to address something. I don't know if you're seeing this, but this is a live premiere of the video, which includes a live chat in the side if you're on the desktop or right below us if you're using your mobile phone. Now, I've had, I think it was like four or five messages yesterday that are based on the same concept of me being super talented, thank you, because I can type in on live chat while talking to you guys on the live video. And I even had people saying that they didn't want to ask me questions during the live premiere to not interrupt me with my design process. The thing is, I'm not that talented. This isn't a live video. What you're seeing right now is pre-recorded. It's just that YouTube has this option that for me as a YouTuber, I can upload a video and then I can just click on it and it will go on or I can click on it and it will start as a live premiere, which basically mean this. If I upload a video right away as is, and the video goes up, you can just, you know, skip to the 15th minute, skip to the 20th, do whatever you want because it's a, it's a video and it's out there. But if I do a live premiere and you come in 10 minutes later, you will see what I recorded 10 minutes later. So the live premieres are kind of fun. It's a way for me to watch my videos with you guys because I don't really have any time to watch YouTube now that I've started having a YouTube channel. If you see something that you want to ask a question about and you can literally just ask me this minute instead of holding off all your questions till the end. And I really like doing it. It also creates a, you know, a normal video at the end. So the minute the premiere ends, if you just, you know, refresh the screen, you will see the video as is and you can skip to all of its different parts. Now, whenever I'm asking you a question that is about different types of videos that I want to make, if you put it in the live chat, I'm not going to see it because the live chat goes away after the premiere ends. So if you have any ideas or requests for future videos, please do it in the comment section below. And now we are going to get started. If you want to click the like button and make me feel good about this video before we get started, you should do it. It's fun. And we're going to get started with Pinterest and this video is going to have five parts to it. The first part is you and me talking. We're going to be talking a bit about Pinterest and why I prefer to Instagram. And then we're going to go to my computer. I'm going to show you six different ways to pin basically photos from Redbubble to Pinterest. And again, this is also a good tip for all of the other platforms. We're going to go back to me. We're going to talk a bit some more about boards and how to use boards. And then I'm going to show it to you on my computer. And then we're going to go back to me because this day is going to be like a crazy yo-yo video and everything is going to be like this and this and that. Let's get started. What is Pinterest? So I don't know how many of you guys know the story behind Facebook, that basically Facebook started as a way for Mark Zuckerberg to find out if people in his college are single, but Pinterest basically started as a place to replace the wedding binders of the 80s and 90s, when people would have like, you know, they're going to have a wedding one day, so they have a wedding binder, and whenever they see something nice wedding related, they, you know, cut it out of the magazine and put it in a binder. So Pinterest, which is basically to pin your interest, became a way for you to get organized online with the things that you want to buy, the things that you want to learn and the things that you want to do, which is why it's the best place to market your shop because this is literally a place where people go to to look at photos of things they want to buy. I, I mean, come on, it's not Instagram in the least. I mean, Instagram doesn't allow you to put links onto photos and Pinterest, everything has a direct link to it. And it's also that the logic of it is quite different. Because you only have one link in bio on Instagram, let's say you designed something two months ago and you uploaded it to Instagram and someone just saw it now and they see, oh, this is a really beautiful photo of a cat or I don't know, whatever you designed and they go to the link in bio and all they see are your recent designs or your recent works or things that sold and they're on Redbubble. 
they can just go and click and search for anything else. A lot of people don't know how Redbubble works in terms of, you know, this is a specific artist, so I'm going to search everything in this specific artist. They just click on other things. But when you're on Pinterest and you see something that you want to buy, you click on it and it goes directly into that thing, which makes a lot more sense to me in terms of a person that wants to sell stuff online. So to me, I think that Pinterest is far more important than Instagram. I don't think that it's far more important in the way that you shouldn't have an Instagram account for your designs. If you do want to have an Instagram account, I'm all for it. And there's going to be a full Instagram Redbubble tutorial coming up in April. I am going to be doing a full video on Google SEO on the 26th of the month, but I do want to touch a bit about Pinterest SEO. And the thing is, if you're pinning things from your Redbubble, your SEO work needs to be good. Your tags and the names of everything. The sun is totally getting in my... Is this better? Oh, right. This is not alive. <laughs> I keep forgetting that too. Anyway. You have a lot of different places on Pinterest where you can put down your descriptions, your tags, and I'm physically going to show you how to do it when we get to my screenshot. A big problem that a lot of people on Redbubble don't understand even that they have on Pinterest is that, is that a part of SEO, and people think that SEO is keywords, but it's not. SEO is basically a way of a search engine to determine what to show to people when they ask for something. So. In terms of that, yeah, keywords matter. If I'm searching for a t-shirt with funny cat, then Pinterest or Google or whatever platform I'm in right now is going to scan for that. But they're also going to have other variations of what to show me because they can't just show me everything they need to choose. So in terms of Redbubble, yes, they will flat out show up things that sell more because if they sell more, maybe people like them more. But in terms of Pinterest, you have a size factor and Pinterest prefers all your photos to be 1000 by 1500 pixels. And these are not photos that you can get from Redbubble. You have to create them yourselves, which I will show you in a minute. So without further ado, let's go to my computer for the second part of this video where I will show you six different methods to pin photos from Redbubble onto Pinterest. And for this tutorial, I'm actually going to be using a blank Pinterest account that I've been dying to start for about a week now, but I kept it blank just for you guys so I could, I could make this tutorial and I hope you like it. Don't forget that after this part, we're going to go back to me and talk a bit more about creating boards. I have so much work ahead of us today and so many things that I want to show you guys on Pinterest, so I'm going to cut down on the chit chat on this video and just let's get down to business with the first out of the six systems to basically upload or pin things to your Pinterest. Now, I don't know if you know this, but if you just go to a product, there is absolutely no way that I can pin this image. I mean, there is no Pinterest banner that pops up. If I click on the search, it's basically going to let me search Pinterest for this photo. And I know that this is a part where a lot of people get stuck in because, well, you can't really pin this photo. So the first system would be to pin a photo from the promoted artwork page, which will be here. You go to your account and you go to manage portfolio. And here you can see my latest four uploads. And I'm just gonna click on this mark here and go to promote artwork, not promote products where you can download photos, but promote artwork. And on this page, as you can see, I do have the option to save a photo to Pinterest. So this is gonna be pretty basic if I just wanna pin, I don't know, let's say a t-shirt or a tank. So I'm gonna click on save. I'm gonna choose the pin I wanna save, which is this one. And usually this is the part where you can see your boards, but as I said, this is a completely brand new Pinterest account that I recently opened. It's for a new project that I'm working on, but I wanted to keep it a bit more clean and have nothing on it because I wanted to use it for this tutorial. So for example, I will be creating a board and I will call it funny t-shirts for women. And as you can see, Pinterest is already offering me what to pin on this board because 
the main point of Pinterest was not set for people who do marketing. It was set for people who are searching for things and want to save things. But we're going to ignore this one here now and get back to it later on. So I'm going to minimize this. I just have a board created. Let me just quickly go back here and reload this page to scan for the new board. And I'll go back to the tank top and I'm going to save it. And it's going to show me the board that I have created, which is funny t-shirts for women. I can also create a different board, which let's say um, t-shirts for cat lovers or anything like that and click on create. And it was automatically saved for the board that I just created. This is an important thing to know. I, I just saved it. Now I can see it. And when I see it on Pinterest, I can move it, I can change it, I can go here and edit it and change it to funny t-shirts for women. This is the first system, but as I'm about to show you, this is not going to be a good system because this photo is 1000 by 1000 pixels and Pinterest actually prefers that your photos are going to be at least 1000 by 1500 pixels. So because Pinterest prefers a larger photo size, the chances of a photo like this to be promoted are quite slim. And that's going to take me to the second option that you have to create pins manually with your photo. So let's just go to a page of one of these photos. And as you can see here, there are far more photos to be pinned than just the photo that I saw at the beginning because we also have all of these four photos that we can use that I couldn't use from the Promote Artwork page, as well as the photo of the actual t-shirt. Now the problem here, as I said before, you can't just pin this photo. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Pinterest and we are going to go to where I find t-shirts for women. Let's just re revamp this and it will show us the one pin that we've created. And I am going to click on plus because I want to add a pin manually. Now you can add a pin manually by uploading a photo or by giving the website's URL. I'm going to show you both ways. So I don't know if you've seen my latest video yesterday with the cover photos, but the way that I can extract a photo is basically if I click on it, I'm going to right click inspect and I'm just going to grab the code of that image and copy paste it to the URL line. And that way I can save this photo to my computer and then go to Pinterest, click here, go to my downloads where it's going to be appearing now, choose the photo and I can upload it manually. Now when I upload it manually, the most important part is the link to this specific product. So I'm going to go back, I'm going to grab the link here, go to Pinterest and add the destination link here. Now as you can see again, they say we recommend an image that is at least 1000 pixels by 1500 pixels and this image is 750 by 1000. The largest images on Redbubble are 1000 by 1000, so neither of them are going to work. But I'm just going to quickly show you this way because it might not work as well as bigger photos, but it still does get traffic from Pinterest. And we're going to name it, and I'm going to name it Funny Quarantine T-shirt for women. And here, when we tell everybody what this pin is about, we need to use keywords. So I'm just going to quickly grab this. And I'm going to write funny t-shirt for cat lovers, a shirt of a cat in quarantine, funny cat kitten quarantine meme shirt. And just, you know, stuff like that that are going to attract people because if someone searches for something and that something is written here, then most chances that they will get an opportunity to see it. And don't forget to hit on add alt text, which is basically what is in the t-shirt. So it's funny, quarantine t-shirts for women who love cats with a kitten inside a coffee mug during quor quarantine. And now that I have this one, I can publish it to funny t-shirts, the t-shirt for cat lovers, because these are the boards that I have. So let's just do it for t-shirts for cat lovers. 
and it's published. This was the first way. The problem with this system is that, again, the photo was really, really too small. Let's go back to adding more pins. And I'm going to show you a quicker way to do the exact same thing that I did right now, which is to just grab the link from here and save a link from a website directly. And it's going to basically scan the website and show me everything on it. So right now what I can do is I can just pick all of them in one swoosh. So I will be adding seven different pins and I will need to fill out the details for all of them. And note that all of them still have this comment about this photo being too small. And don't forget to add your alt text because it's important. And also you don't have to pin all of them to the same board. I can pin like this one could be funny t-shirt for men. This one can be unisex t-shirt board. This one can be t-shirts for women. This could be t-shirts for cat lovers. This could be t-shirts for men. We have all kinds of boards that we can basically take the same art and post it on. What you can't do is select this one, upload it, and then do the same process again and select this one again, because Pinterest is going to recognize that you're uploading the exact same photo from the exact same source. And it's sort of a spam thing. So the second upload and even the first are going to get less promoted because Pinterest is going to view your account as spam. Moving on to the fourth option, which I think some of you are going to like, which is to use a screenshot. So for example, what I will do here is I'll basically stand here and I'm going to grab a screenshot. I don't know how you guys do it. I do it with a Mac, so it's pretty simple. And I'm going to create a screenshot like this. And I'm going to go to my Pinterest and I'm going to click on plus and I'm going to manually upload a screenshot that I just took, which should be on my desktop. Yep. So I'm uploading this and again, it's going to tell you that this photo is pretty small because my screen resolution is smaller. I'm using a, a relatively small Mac and it's only 1410 by 693 pixels, but you can still use this and pin this photo. Moving on, let me just get off the pin builder and sort of give it a restart. We can also start uploading photos that we did using Placeit because Placeit mockups are relatively larger. So I have a few Placeit photos saved to my computer. If you want me to do a full tutorial just on Placeit and the possibilities that you have with it, please let me know. I'd be happy to make one. And I'm going to scroll down and search for some of my more interesting pins. And I have this one. And you can see here the sizes. So this one is 1440 by 1878, which would be large enough for Pinterest. So once I uploaded this, now you see, again, they recommend using an aspect ratio that it's le at least two width and three tall. So even now that I uploaded a bigger size, Pinterest still wants me to create a thousand by a thousand five hundred pixels, but I'm going to do it nonetheless. And if I want to use this one, I will just need to go and grab the specific product. And I'm just going to quickly grab the link here and I'm going to put the destination link in here and write down baby onesie, baby jumpsuit, bodysuit, whatever. And again, do not forget the add alt text, which is incredibly, incredibly important. And moving on to the sixth way to upload photos onto Pinterest, which is going to be the most recommended way to do it. And that's going to be by actually manually designing pins to upload to Pinterest. And even in this one, I have a few pins that I want to show you. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here and Canva actually has Pinterest pins as templates. So we're going to go to Pinterest pin. And again, this is a 1000 by 1500 pixels because that's what Pinterest likes. So we're going to go here and choose a blank one for now. I'm going to go to my uploads because I can still use that very same baby photo that I took from before because it was big enough. Just the ratios were not good. So I'm just going to drag it over here. And now if I download this photo, I'm going to download it on PNG. I can go to my Pinterest and I can do add and just drag this over here. 
And now you see, there is no comment, there is no remark. It's not gonna tell me anything about the ratio and I can just put the destination link here and upload it this way. Another thing I can do with these kind of pins is basically create a collage. Now this collage can be product-based and it could be design-based. So for example, let me see if I have some of these here that have uh, the same design on different types of mock-ups. Okay, so I have the owl, I will always love you that I did for the Creative Fabrica video. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on add page and I'm gonna go to templates and you can see that they have a lot of very interesting templates for Pinterest. And I'm gonna show you how to use them in terms of promoting your artwork. So let's just start with the first and the basic one and you have a photo element and you have a text element. I'm gonna go back to uploads and I'm gonna choose this square pillow. And as you can see, the photo is not the same. It's a bit blur. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna to go to adjust because that template had some settings. I'm gonna clear this up and write down just the cutest gift for the one you love. And this would be the pin that I will download and upload onto Pinterest. Now I wanted to create a collage one because I have all of these different items that I made with the same design. So I'm gonna go back to templates and I'm gonna try and find something that combines a few photos. And if not, I'm just gonna create it manually. You know what, I'm just gonna create it manually because I wanna give you the biggest value and I want you to learn how to do everything yourselves. So we went back to elements and we're gonna choose a grid. And let's say I wanna display five photos in here. So I'm gonna try and find a five photo grid, but I don't want them to be this way because that's too small. Maybe let's try like a two by three kind of thing. They have it, yeah, something like this. So I'm just gonna take this one and I'm gonna put it here, I'm not gonna use all of the space of it and I'm gonna minimize all the spacing. And then I'm gonna go back to my uploads and I'm gonna take the t-shirts and sort of these photos that look well in a vertical state, maybe put the women in the middle. And for these two, I'm gonna grab these two. And again, you need to make sure that everything matches so maybe this is not going to be a good fit for this now because they all have this like white background so maybe it's better that i use a more white background thing or just make sure to adapt it or do something like this and i'm just going to quickly grab this whole text area here move it up it's going to work on my background a bit maybe change the color and I'll need to obviously adjust the color of these ones. And make sure you, you can actually match this color to the color of the owl, which is super cute and very important. You can also change all of the fonts. Obviously, it's not something that I'm really doubting on right now because, you know, by that, by that point, if you've seen my videos, you know how to use Canva. So let's just do this and we have some spacing here that we need to adjust so we're going to ungroup i'm going to put this in the middle and we're going to write down new design I'll always minimize it love you gift ideas and you can really change it up and make sure that it fits yours the biggest part of it would be to create several different templates that you will use. So for example, I can use, if I have 90 designs in my shop right now, I can use this template for pretty much all of them, as long as they are consistent. And I can move this up a bit here and just grab one of these down below and see, and write down like click for, sorry, click for more details. Or I can even write down designed by May Arroyo. You can also put your logo in here. And this is a cool way to design your pin that includes the same design on different products. But I can also do something a bit similar to that 
with the exact same product. And for that, I'm going to choose a four grid. So let's just go here and go back to the four and do like a full even one. And this will be here. I'm going to eliminate my spacing and I'm going to try and find basically the same item with different designs on it. So, you know, if you want to promote like a different type of t-shirt, so I'll have like this t-shirt, maybe make it a bit taller. And remove this line. And let's just find like this t-shirt has this design and this t-shirt has this design. We have this t-shirt with this design. Let's see if I have another cool woman here. And this little girl here. Let's just make sure that their heads are not being cut off. And I can write something about this design here when I feature like, you know, my women fashion collection. And when you upload a design that is based on this, the link that you're going to use is the link to all of the artwork. So for example, if this is the I will always love you, when I go to my manage portfolio, I will find this specific design and I'm going to click on promote artwork, not promote products. And I'm going to grab the link from there, just like I did with the first one that I showed you. And when you do something like this, you can either send people up to a page that relates to it. Like for example, if I go back to my entire shop, I will just go to, I don't know, clothing and I'll click on t-shirts for example, and then just grab this link and put it when I pin this item over here. There are so many other ways to create manual pins. You can create a manual pin for each one of your artwork in this way. You can create it this way. You can also create one that it's all about, you know, cards or Easter or whatever. There are so many opportunities here. And this really goes to one of the things that I mentioned in, I think it was like so many videos that I talked about that, that people are constantly spending their time to just making designs and making designs and making designs and making more designs. And people spend five months just designing. And the thing is, this is not an option for anyone. I mean, I know people who sell like prints and, and pillows and mugs with photographs of their oil paintings and oil paintings, watercolor paintings, acrylic paintings. These are not something that you like slap on an automated system in a computer that generates text. It's not that easy. So you'd have a, an artwork that took hours or days or weeks to make that you photograph it and upload it. And you can't really go back and do this process all over again to create a thousand designs. And this also comes to the point where why do I only have 90 designs and I still sell? And it's not just that. Before I opened this YouTube channel, which is two months ago, I had 30 designs for the past four years and I was still selling because I would rather spend 80% of my time working on my marketing. And it's not even working on marketing. It's 80% of my time working on Pinterest, 10% of my time marketing through blogs, and the other 10% is about the designing. So I, I know it's a very different approach to a lot of what you guys have seen in other YouTube channels. And it's cool. I mean, if you choose a different approach, if you prefer to just design with trends, I'm not going to tell you it's not going to work because it works for some people. But what works for me is to focus on marketing. Another thing you can do is really utilize the fact that Redbubble has a sale on stickers. So I could just grab one of my photos because I took a lot of photos of the stickers that I got from you guys. And I'm just going to align it. And I can put it here. And this is a very, you see, like it's a very general kind of photo. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab a piece of text. Let's grab this one because it's cute. And I'm going to put it here and write down 50% off. Like make it like huge. Yes. And let's give it like an echo in white. Shadow, 
maybe a shadow would be better than an echo. Like a white shadow. And let's just change the color of this one to black. I'll change this one to this. 50% off when you buy 10 stickers on Redbubble. And I can really just create so many promotional posts for this sale. And when I do this, I will send people off to the link of my sticker page on Redbubble. And obviously this could, you know, I don't want to say backfire, but obviously when you send in traffic for Redbubble, you're sending in traffic for all of Redbubble, not just to yourself, which is why it's extremely important to have your own website, even if you're not selling on this website, just to have your own website set up, you know, that you can generate traffic from and basically let people browse in your own collection. And then when they make up their minds, they click on something and it goes to Redbubble to buy it. So this is another way to do this. And that concludes this part of the tutorial. We still have a lot more to cover. We're gonna go back to me where I will be talking to you about basically two approaches to having a Pinterest account to promote your Redbubble, your Society6, your Etsy store, and one of them is going to be focused on you and the other ones are gonna be focused on topics. We're gonna go back to me we're gonna have a little chat on that and then I'm gonna meet you back here for another screen grab. So take it away from me, me. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this system. Let me know if you found one of these systems more fitting to your needs and which one you're gonna be using the most. I'd be happy to chat with you about that in the comments in the side. But what I wanna to talk to you about is basically the concept of boards because you have a Pinterest account and you need to put boards in it and those boards even have sections and put stuff into boards. So what are you gonna have your boards about? I mean, that relates to what your Pinterest account is about. And if you've seen some of my videos where I talked about, you know, if you wanna focus your marketing efforts on you as an artist, or if you wanna focus on a specific niche, or if you wanna focus on a specific product. So in this case, you could have a Pinterest account that is about the artist. And the boards that you will have as an artist are very different than the boards you will have as a Pinterest account for home decor. So if you're an artist, you can have different types of boards for yourself, for the photos of your work in progress, for things that you wanna buy and for your art. And yes, I am mentioning things that you wanna buy because one of the biggest factors in Pinterest SEO is playing nice with the system. And the thing is, Pinterest is going to prefer your account in search results if you have pins from other people's boards and to a lot of people that sounds crazy i've had artists saying like you are crazy if you think that i'm going to pin my competitors on my pinterest account and first of all no one gives a lick about your pinterest account you opened your pinterest account yesterday you have zero visitors no one cares and if you don't pin from other sources, you will get zero traffic. So, you know, if you, if, you, if you have no ego, go ahead and do it. If you have ego, go ahead and find a different social channel. But you also don't have to directly pin from your competition. If you are an artist, you can pin things that you want to buy as a person. You know, you don't, as an artist that makes... I don't know, watercolor paintings and put them on Redbubble, I am guessing that you buy stuff other than your own designs. I mean, you buy food, you eat things, you, you, you buy paint. So if you use this Pinterest account to promote yourself as an artist, the more personal it's going to be, the more successful. And if you're using this Pinterest account to focus yourself about a niche or a product type, then yes, you can pin other things that are not your competitors. And I want to really go dive deep into that and explain it for a second. Because, for example, I can have a whole Pinterest account about loving cats. And let's say I have cat designs on my Redbubble. So one of the boards is going to be, you know, like uh, t-shirts for cat lovers. And then we're going to have cat stickers and cat magnets and clocks with cats and cats wall art and cats on pillows and just generally, you know, like cat gifts mugs for cat lovers, cards with cats, and also 
funny photos of cats online. You can also go and, 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 and pin like cat necklaces that you have nothing to do with, that you didn't make, that are not competing with you. Because if a person wants to buy a cat sticker and they see a cat necklace, that is not a competition in any way. And this would be more of a niched, focused Pinterest account. But you can also have a Pinterest account that is focused on a specific, um, I don't want to say topic, but more like a specific decor or a specific medium or product based, which will be, let's say, a whole Pinterest account just for fashion. So you'll have like tees for women and t-shirts for men and funny t-shirts for men and t-shirts for kids and onesies for babies and dresses for women. And if it's about fashion, then the tote bags go in just as fine and the scarves and all that. You can also have a Pinterest account that is only about home decor and showing off, you know, your pillows and showing off your mugs and your wallet and your clocks. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. I'm going to give you deeper tips. Just like I designed these pins, I'm going to show you how I quickly design other pins to fit these types of topics. So I don't really want to touch that that much because I don't want to interfere with myself explaining to you later on. So we are going to go back to me, where I'll show you how to create all these boards and kind of how to maneuver the system. But I want to remind you something first. You can have multiple Pinterest accounts. All you need are different emails. So for example, if you have all of your products on Redbubble activated, if you make seamless patterns, if you have beautiful wall art and t-shirts and bigger products, you can easily create a Pinterest account for fashion, a Pinterest account for the kitchen, a Pinterest account for wall art, a Pinterest account for, I don't know, general home decor, bathroom, a Pinterest account for kids. I mean, think about it. You can have a Pinterest account for kids and babies where you show off the wall art that is good for baby rooms, like for nurseries. You can also show off, you know, the baby onesies and the t-shirts for kids. But then pin from Pinterest toys for kids or different things that are not on Redbubble and Society6. Options are as big as you can imagine. So let's go back to me where I'll show you on my screen how to create different boards and how to adapt pins to different board styles. And I'm reminding you that after that, you're going to go back to me again, which will be the fifth segment of this video and the last part of the ping pong because I have some things that I want to ask you. Let's go back to my computer and I'll see you when I get done. So now that we're back onto Pinterest, I want to show you an artist Pinterest. So the artist Pinterest, I'm just going to upload something from the computer. And if you've seen my video yesterday, you saw that I took one of the photos of the artist that was sort of like working. And I'm going to use this one as a cover photo. And the photo here is going to be of the artist and you can do this photo here from the setting page. And what I will do now is if I'm an artist and I want to upload things, so the things that I will upload would be one, my product. And you can have like my paintings on pillows board and my paintings on wall art or stuff like that. But you can also have like photos of your work in the process, which you will manually upload by just creating a board. And manually upload. I don't know if I need to repeat that process because we've pretty much done it before, but the board will be either like my life, and you can upload photos from your life, like you know, just going to the grocery store or photographing some stuff, but you can also write like work in progress or behind the scenes, you know, of your work and just create this board. Obviously, don't pin anything from Pinterest because it's not gonna really help you. And then just go and manually upload the photos of you as you work. Another board idea that you can have if you're having a full-on artist Pinterest account is sharing photos from Instagram and sharing photos from your life and sharing, you know, all of the items that you're making. And of course, if you're on Society6 and on Redbubble, you can do both. Make a board for my wall art, make a, wall, a board for buying original paintings if that's an option, make a board for fashion with my art, make a board for painting wall art clocks or whatever you want. But then again, we have this problem where you'll be only uploading from yourself and not from inside the platform. So for that, you can actually do stuff like, let's say this guy is a painter. 
And once he's done painting, then he scans or photographs the photos of the paintings and uploads them onto Redbubble. So for example, this person might also be interested in things like, I don't know, paint brushes and canvases. So you can go here and make a board that is called Art Supply. And basically just go onto Pinterest because it's gonna give me ideas to pin to this new board and I'm just gonna pin them. I'm just gonna pin all of them. And I'm not gonna do this once. Every day that I go into Pinterest for five minutes, I'm gonna check in, you know, art supplies. And to be honest, if you are an artist, this part is supposed to be fun. I mean, this is the part where you go over and you see how people organize their art supplies. You might be able to find, you know, like cheap deals on watercolors or any of that. So this could be like, you know, a board that you can do that isn't from you to just play along with Pinterest rules. And a few other board ideas can be, let's think together what another good board idea could be. Let's just go like with inspiration. Let's say I'm inspired by nature. So let's just say like, if I'm inspired by nature with my artwork, let's just write down nature photography that inspires me. And this is also a way for people who come up to your Pinterest to really see that you're not using this as a, a big board for selling your art. You're really sharing. And you just go over and you check out the photos. And honestly, if you are an artist that is inspired by nature photos, this should give you ideas on, on what to create. And you're playing within the system and you're not competing with anyone. I mean, you're not posting photos of people who compete with you because I don't post anything here that's on a clock or a tote bag or a t-shirt. Just photos that inspire me as an artist. You can also, you know, if this is your own account, you can use it as sort of your wish list. And on your wish list board, so let's do like wish list for 2021. On your wish list board, you need to think about the things that you want to buy. So for example, I will go here and I will search for, let's say I'm an artist and I'm really into like Nike hats. So I'm going to write like Nike hat. And there is no copyright infringement in taking a Nike, Nike hat and putting it on, you know, my my wish list. Pinterest was created for you to have wish lists, so you know you can just do that. And you can also add in this board things that you designed yourselves if you want to buy them. And let's say you want to have a Pinterest that is focused on a topic. And I think that these ones are pretty much the best ones to have if you're not a visual artist that makes art in real life and have these things to share. So the topics of your entire Pinterest account, and let's just choose a topic. Let's say I want the topic of my entire Pinterest account, this Pinterest account, to be bathroom decor. So I will have to go and I will have to find a nice photo of a bathroom. And I think I kind of have a mock-up already that I did with one of my uh, shower curtains. So I'm gonna use this one. And you can name it, not by you, not by your name, but just name it, you know, bathroom mania or crazy bathroom ideas. And what I will have here is I will have one board for shower curtains that I will pin for my red bubble. I will have another board for bath mats from, you know, my red bubble. And I can also try to create pins of my wall art for bathroom. And for example, I can just go to the Pinterest pin page and I'm going to go and create a new one. And I'm going to go to photos and I'm going to write down on Canva bathroom wall art mockup and see what kind of options I have. Now, obviously, most of them are horizontally aligned and I need something that is vertical or that can be used here. And this one could be a really good one, although I think it's kind of big for Redbubble. Like this photo would be too big. Let's try and find out something that isn't going to be a bit big for Redbubble. Maybe this one that looks a bit smaller. And I'm just going to stretch it up a bit. And I'm going to put it here. Make sure that it looks good. That it looks like bathroomy. And I'm just going to go to my uploads and find one of the pieces of the paintings that I drew or the art that I drew 
forgive me, but I'm just going to pick up one of my cards because I'm feeling kind of lazy right now to find actually one of my art. Let's go zoom in a bit and really make sure that it looks good. Now, if you have photos that the brightness of the photo or the adjustment is a bit different than your art, so, you know, you can just adjust it to like minus four and it's going to fit a bit better. So what I will do here is basically take a text and write down, you know, like funny bathroom prints or stuff like that. So my entire Pinterest account is going to be about bathroom design and I can have like clocks from my shop that I think that are good for bathrooms. If you're on Society6 or on any other platform that also has like towels, that will be an amazing idea. As if you're on Society6, you also have curtains and you can create a whole Pinterest account, not board account for bathroom ideas. And in this case, I will choose several boards to promote my products, but I can also have different boards that have nothing to do with a competition for me because I could just go here and make a board and call it dream bathtubs and just go and just click on bathtub ideas i mean i'm not selling a bathtub but this is pretty dreamy and this looks amazing oh my god is that a bath hammock oh my god it's fantastic and just pin it and you know people who are interested in baths are going to find your account and pinterest is going to like you because you work within the rules of the system and this is by no mean a competition for you. You can also create a different board for, I don't know, flower vases for your bathroom and all kinds of that. And this would be like a total Pinterest account that is all about bathrooms. You can do the same with actually home decor and have like pillows and blankets. You could do the same Pinterest for living room ideas, which will create like, you know, wall art and your throw pillows and your throw blankets and all kinds of that. And you can create a kid's Pinterest account, which will have all your onesies, as well as nursery wall art if you have. And again, don't use the ones that you get from Redbubble. There is no nursery wall art <laughs> on Redbubble. Seriously, if I go to wall art, the chances of me finding something with nursery is just not their mock-ups. But if you just go here and let's say I click here, and I go to photos and I do like nursery wall art mock-up. There are so many different things. I mean, it's brilliant. So let me just quickly adjust it to show me like vertical photos because that would be better. I'm just gonna grab this one and put a photo of mine in here and upload it as nursery wall art because Redbubble doesn't have a nursery, but they do have wall art. So you can take advantage of that in a different way. And I can also use this one, which will give me, I think, a bit more room to have like, you know, text above it. Let's just go like this. And you can put like your nursery here. You can also just upload the photo, like um, just let, let's go with the blank one. Not even, not even putting any photo here. Just write down like missing art from your nursery walls. And then the link would go to all of your nursery paintings. So there are so many ideas using Pinterest, and I do believe that we've covered them all up for this part, and I do believe that we are ready to get back to, well, me again. I feel like I'm playing ping pong with you guys, and, you know, just let me know, because we're doing this uh, video premiere, so there is live chat. Let me know what you think about these ideas, like, what do you think about having your own, like, Pinterest account? Would you prefer to have, like, an artist's Pinterest account? or based on topics. And of course, the topics can be like bathroom, the topics can be home decor. And inside home decor, you could have, you know, a board for a bathroom. And the topics could be like fashion. So you'd have like fashion for women, funny t-shirts for men, fashion for kids, fashion for babies, fashion accessories, which will include the tote bags and all that. You can actually have a full on Pinterest account just for face masks. I mean, come on, you guys. People are still buying face masks. This is insane. Is coronavirus like a year now? Anyway, I'm going to stop babbling and go back to babbling with my face instead of the screen. <laughs> so we're back to me with the last part of this video where I have two things that I want to sort of ask or suggest 
that you do. If any of you have Pinterest accounts that have any type of wall art from Redbubble, please comment below, not on the live chat, but below in the comment section, your Pinterest name because I have my own Pinterest account just for Think Wall Art, and I'm always looking for other pins on Pinterest to pin to it, you know, to play by the rules, and I'd rather them be yours. So if you have any type of wall art, please leave a comment with the name of your Pinterest down below in the section. And the second thing I want to share with you guys is a few updates. The first one, I am working on my own website, which was sort of have this directory of all my videos, the order to watch them and, you know, just valuable tips more than what I give here. For example, I made a video about how to know like the sizes that you need for printable wall art on Etsy. And in that video, I explained, you know, the DPI and the pixels and the inches. So I will have on my website a free PDF that you can go and download with all the guidelines. So I'm working on that. It's going to take me some time because I'm addicted to making YouTube videos. I'm also working on a stickers <laughs> website because I'm, I'm taking my sticker obsession to the next level. And of course, when it comes to asking you guys to market and you know find cool stickers i'm gonna do the same thing that i did with the wall art and do that i am also thinking about making a bit more videos about affiliate marketing or maybe go back to doing some of the design with me kind of videos so i think april is going to be pretty interesting i'm trying to set out like maybe one video per day during april but i'm not sure if i'm moving apartment in that month and that month is also a month that includes Memorial Day for Fallen Soldiers, which will be an extremely hard couple of days for me, so I will not be filming in those days. But I will see you guys in three days on the 10th with a full video of over 15 types of items you can sell as digital downloads on Etsy. And I don't mean 15 types of wall art. Wall art, printable wall art, is one of them. There are so many digital download items that you can start selling on Etsy, especially if you're already selling on Redbubble. And that is it from me for today. If you like this video, hit that like button below and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Visit my Instagram if you want to get notified on my story whenever a video is about to premiere to have this fun live chat. Thanks to all of the people who joined me in this live chat today, which by the way, as I said in the beginning, this was pre-recorded. So this could actually go on and I would be saying it and there was no one in the live chat today. Think about it. <laughs> so that's it from me for today. I will see you in three days with a full video walkthrough of all of the digital download business options on Etsy. Bye!